the nightly business report good evening tonight sri lanka's exchange rate agreement has been classified as other managed by the international monetary fund the remittances from sri lankan overseas workers has surged more than 500 million us dollars in july bringing the total for the first 7 months of the year to 3.71 billion us dollars Following an exceptionally volatile week at the Colombo Stock Exchange, the market sentiment remains positive at the start of this week. And retailers are rushing to bring products to the United States for the holiday season ahead of a potential strike by port workers starting in October. From Studio 24, here's Vinuth Wanasuriya. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Sri Lanka's exchange rate arrangement involving ADHOC interventions which has so far remained stable and provided a strong foundation for economic activities to resume amid broadly deflationary monetary policy has been classified as other managed by the International Monetary Fund. Especially after 1978 as the IMF second amendment to its articles deprived members of a credible anchor for money countries ended up with various exchange rates and arrangements which collapses due to conflicting money and exchange policies triggering high inflation social unrest and political upheavals The IMF said in its last economic report that the de jure exchange rate arrangement is classified as free floating while the de facto exchange rate arrangement is classified as other managed. The de jure arrangement is usually the one that is conveyed to the fund by the authorities of a country. The de facto regime is what IMF staff observes it to be usually after watching how a currency behaves for 6 months or more. A free floating central bank does not intervene in the market and build foreign reserves or lose them or sterilize in either direction. Sri Lanka now has a reserve target under an IMF program so the rupee cannot free float. The remittances from Sri Lanka's overseas workers surged to 566.8 million US dollars in July 2024, bringing the total for the first 7 months of the year to 3.71 billion US dollars. According to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, this marks a 10.3% increase compared to the same period last year. State Minister of Finance Shahan Semasinghe said on X remittances from Sri Lankan overseas workers reached 566.8 million US dollars in July of 2024 bringing the total for the first 7 months of the year to 3.71 billion US dollars this represents a 10.3% increase compared to the same period last year underscoring the vital role of the expatriate community in supporting and strengthening the economy Worker remittances is one of the top foreign exchange revenue earners for the island nation which is still recovering from an unprecedented economic crisis. Same as saying a thank former minister Manushanana Yakara for his support and dedication to the welfare of overseas workers which has greatly contributed to this positive trend. The remittances have risen continuously after the central bank gave up parallel exchange rate regimes. Speak of the Parliament Honorable Mahinda Yapabe Vardhana has endorsed the certificate on the bill titled Economic Transformation Bill. The bill with the objective of providing provisions for the national policy on economic transformation was presented to the Parliament on the 22nd of May 2024. Thereafter on the 25th of July 2024 the debate of the second reading for the bill was held in Parliament. The bill was passed in Parliament with the amendments and without a vote. Accordingly this bill will be known as the Economic Transformation Act number no. 45 of 2024. State Minister of Finance Ranjit Siambala Pitti has said that Sri Lanka state pensioners will be paid 6000 rupees in October after an increase of 3000 rupees from September was shot down by the Elections Commission. The cabinet decided to pay the 3000 rupee allowance to 700000 pensioners effective September but minister Siambala Pitiya said that the elections commission opposed it as an election was declared as a result a 6000 rupee payment would be made with arias in October he added that from November 3000 rupees would be added to the pension Earlier this year a 2500 rupee allowance was given to pensioners unlike unemployed graduates who are hired without actual vacancies many of Sri Lanka's current pensioners were in government service working for small salaries Let's take a short commercial break now stock exchange updates right after this this is the nightly business report
Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Following an exceptionally volatile week at the Colombo Stock Exchange, the market sentiment has remained positive at the start of the week, raising hope among investors. Both the All Share Price Index and the SNP SL20 Index recorded gains by the close of today's market session. Well, to provide a detailed summary of today's trading activity, we now turn to Anjali Matthews from First Capital Holdings. Yes, Vinod. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange experienced thin trading volumes and limited activity with mixed sentiment as political uncertainty caused investors to sustain the cautious stance that was seen in the previous weeks. The All Share Price Index displayed limited movement, closing at 11,312, gaining only 9 points from the previous week. The S&P SL20 index also experienced a slight increase, gaining 9 points to close at 3,204. Increased buying interest was, ob was observed amongst companies that delivered a strong quarterly performance, and most tourism sector companies also experienced increased interest following a rise in tourist arrivals in the month of July. As low sentiment persisted, turnover stood at rupees 337.5 million, marking a 60.3% decrease from the monthly average, reflecting low investor participation. The top gainers of the day include Tess Agro Non-Voting, Bayruela Resorts, and Hunas Holdings, while the top losers of the day include Blue Diamonds Non-Voting, SMB Finance Non-Voting, and Nation Lanka Finance. The positive sentiment at the stock market appears to be persisting through recent trading sessions have been notably volatile. To gain insights into how the market might behave in the upcoming sessions, we turn to Tharusha Shogar, who joins us from First Capital Holdings. Over the past two weeks, the Columbus Stock Exchange has experienced notable volatility, reflecting broader economic and political uncertainties. On Friday, the All Share Price Index showed an uptrend Maintaining this positive trajectory into today's trading session, where the ASPI closed the day on a positive note at 11,312, marking a marginal gain. Investor interest was notably observed in companies that reported year-over-year -year earnings growth for the latest quarter. So, looking ahead, we anticipate that market volatility will continue into the coming week, driven by uh, ongoing uncertainties surrounding the political landscape, particularly regarding the upcoming elections, um, as well as the finalization of uh, external debt restructuring discussions. So we believe these factors are contributing to a cautious atmosphere among investors. Also, market participants appear to be taking a wait and see approach, monitoring developments related to the IMF for further direction. And uh, furthermore, the recent increase in the interest rates uh, at the Treasury bill auction across the board, where one-year T-bill rose about 10% mark, potentially leading investors to shift their focus towards safer investment options. And uh, in te terms of uh, trading activity, turnover has remained lackluster, falling below 350 million rupees today, where market volumes have also been thin. So, given the current environment of uncertainty, we expect the subdued market sentiment to persist in the coming week as well. Coal prices inched higher today on US interest rate cut optimism and bringing geopolitical tensions while traders look to key US interest rate cuts. Sport Gold rose 0.5% to $2,442.38 per ounce and US Gold Futures gained 0.3% at $2,248.50 an ounce. Heightened geopolitical risk and volatility in the other market remain supportive for gold. Investors are pricing in a 49% chance of a 50 basis point rate cut by the Federal Reserve in September, as per the CME Group's FedWatch toll. The US producer and consumer prices, numbers due tomorrow and Wednesday, will be scanned for further cues. Oil prices saw an increase today for the fifth consecutive session, maintaining most of last week over 3% gain as geopolitical tensions in the Middle East continue to escalate and better US economic data faded concerns over a recession. Brent oil futures rose 0.28% to $79.88 per barrel, while the West Texas Intermediate crude futures gained 0.49% to $77.28 per barrel. 
Oil prices rose with support from last week's better than expected US economic data, which eased fears of a recession. Prices were also supported by rising tensions in the Middle East over the weekend. Brent ended last week up more than 3.5%, while WTI gained more than 4% on supportive economic data and greater hopes of a US interest rate cut. The Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated against the US dollar at commercial banks in Sri Lanka today in comparison to the previous week. People's Bank reports that buying and selling rates of the US dollar have dropped from 295 rupees and 27 cents to 294 rupees and 44 cents and from 305 rupees and 87 cents to 305 rupees respectively. According to Commercial Bank, the buying and selling rates of the US dollar have dropped from 294 rupees and 95 cents to 294 rupees and 21 cents and from 304 rupees and 75 cents to 304 rupees respectively. Let's now check the rupees exchange rate against some other global currencies. short break now updates from the corporate sector right after this this is the nightly business report welcome back to the nightly business report Dialogue Asiata PLC recently announced its consolidated financial results for the first six months ended on 30th of June 2024. Financial results included those of Dialogue Asiata PLC, Bharati Airtel Lanka Private Limited and of the Dialogue Asiata Group. The group concluded the first half of 2024 with positive revenue performances across all business segments, including mobile, fixed line, digital pay television and tele-infrastructure. However, due to forex appreciation and the continued scaling down of the low-margin international wholesale business, the group's consolidated revenue declined by 13% year-to-date to 82.5 billion rupees for the first half of 2024, despite core revenue growing by 2% year-to-date. Group revenue declined by 1% quarter on quarter to 41 billion rupees for the first half of 2024. During the quarter, the revenue recognition policy for H1 Private Limited was charged and revenue is now considered net of cost, as opposed to the previous policy of recognizing revenue on a gross basis. Accordingly, the comparative numbers have been updated to reflect this change. Despite an elevated cost base due to unfavorable external factors, the group's earnings before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization remained flat at 27.1 billion rupees for the first half of 2024 and 13.5 billion rupees for the second quarter of 2024 as cost rescaling initiatives delivered an estimated savings of 2.3 billion rupees for the first half of 2024. Uptown, one of Sri Lanka's premier fashion brands, has expanded its presence with the grand opening of its latest branch in the vibrant Bambalapiti area. This new addition marks a significant milestone in Uptown's journey, offering customers an elevated shopping experience. The Bambalapitiya branch of Uptown is designed to provide a fresh and engaging shopping experience. Upon entering, customers are greeted with a wide array of products that cater to diverse tastes and needs. From stylish and affordable clothing to trendy accessories, cosmetics, perfumes and even a selection of food and beverages, this branch truly has something for everyone. Additionally, a variety of household items are also available, making it a one-stop shop for all shopping requirements. Requirements. Every detail has been carefully crafted to ensure a seamless and enjoyable shopping experience. Moreover, the branch introduces a unique feature, which is a restaurant where customers can relax and unwind. This thoughtfully designed space allows shoppers to take a break, enjoy a meal or simply grab a quick snack, making the shopping experience even more enjoyable. Today we have opened our newest branch in Bambalapitiya. Uh, if you go back to 2016, where we had our first branch, uh, that was quite a huge success. So we made sure after eight years later uh, to build our newest branch. 
So what do I have to say to the customers? What I have to say to them is, I feel like this is the first time in this area where you can go, sh you can go for shopping and make sure you can get uh, anything you want. From t-shirts to workwear to dresses to pants to denim, to even household items, to cosmetics, to jewelry, to even grab a cup of coffee. You can do all of those things in Uptown and uh, I feel like all the customers should just, just give us a shot and see what we can offer. Uh, that's just what I want to say. Uh, this Today we have a 30% discount and for the first week we have a 20% discount. So please don't miss it out because I feel like that's worth it because we really want to give a good quality time to all the customers. Our main target is give good quality products for the right price. Cinnamon Hotel and Resorts introduced the Gathering of Giants, an immersive educational weekend event that took place from the 9th of August to the 11th of August 2024 at the Cinnamon Habarana Complex. This unique event was designed to transform the annual natural phenomenon of the world's largest gathering of Asian elephants, the Elephant Gathering, to celebrate the educational experience for all attendees. This spectacular gathering, recognized as the highest concentration of Asian elephants in a single location, occurred at Minaria National Park, where the Minaria tank sustained more than 300 elephants during the dry season. Situated close to Minaria National Park, Cinnamon Harbour and a Lodge and Harbour and a Village by Cinnamon, collectively known as the Cinnamon Harbour and a Complex, provided guests with unparalleled opportunities to witness this awe-inspiring event. The Gathering of Giants, hosted by Cinnamon Hotels and Resorts in collaboration with Cinnamon Nature Trails and Ceylon Bank, aim to honour, conserve and celebrate this natural wonder, while also emphasising the importance of peaceful human-elephant coexistence and effective conflict management. The event successfully highlighted the needs for conservation efforts and raised awareness about the significance of protecting these magnificent creatures and their habitats. Through this initiative, attendees not only experienced the grandeur of the elephant gathering, but also gained a deeper understanding of the challenges faced in maintaining harmony between humans and elephants in the region. People's Bank has yet again come forward to sponsor the historical Kandy Asala Perahara. The sponsorship check of People's Bank was handed over to Pradeep Nilanga Dala Diyavarna Nilame of Sri Lanka Dalanda Maligava by People's Bank Kandy Regional Manager Nalin Pothavala. Assistant General Manager Shamira Kumar Peli and Kandy Branch Senior Manager Prasanna Karuna Ratna were also present at the occasion. Pradeep Nilanga Dala, the Diyavarna Nilame of Sri Dalanda Maligava, expressed his gratitude to People's Bank for offering a sponsorship to strengthen this iconic cultural pageant which showcases and preserves invaluable customs and cultural practices. In a pioneering move within the primary deal industry in Sri Lanka, Wealth Trust Securities has launched a state-of-the-art online platform that enables clients to place bids directly at primary auctions for garment securities. This launch marks a significant step in company's commitment to leveraging advanced technology to enhance customer convenience and accessibility. The newly introduced digital platform is designed with a user-friendly interface that simplifies the process of participating in treasury bill and bond auctions. It represents a significant innovation in the market, promoting democratization of access to garment securities. This initiative not only broadens the investment landscape for seasoned investors, but also opens up opportunities for new investors by simplifying the process traditionally associated with the auction bids. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nicely Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Asian stocks saw a steady, unspectacular start for the week with investors looking ahead to the release of the latest US and Chinese economic data. Also adding to the subdued mood was in a holiday in Japan, the source of the much of the last week's turmoil when Tokyo Bose suffered its second biggest ever daily drop as it plummeted to four-year lows. Chinese stocks experienced little movement as worries over an economic slowdown left investors cautious. Mainland and Hong Kong stocks traded within a narrow range and despite advancements in other regional markets.
Retailers are rushing to bring products to the United States for holiday season ahead of a potential strike by port workers starting in October and ongoing shipping disruptions from attacks in the Red Sea. Retailers are rushing to bring products to the United States for the holiday season ahead of a potential strike by port workers starting in October and ongoing shipping disruptions from attacks in the Red Sea. Container imports and freight rates surged last month as a result, signaling an earlier-than-usual peak season for an ocean shipping industry that handles about 80% of global trade. Analysts expect the current month to be almost as busy. The National Retail Federation said companies that import toys, home goods, and consumer electronics are also catering to consumers who are shopping for gifts even earlier. Experts add that a shorter holiday season is a contributing factor as well, with the late November 28th date for Thanksgiving this year squeezing the peak shopping and delivery season running to Christmas Eve. In July, U.S. container imports registered the third highest monthly volume on record, in part owing to record imports from China, according to a supply chain software provider. Imports from the industrial sector have also contributed to this growth because of looming tariffs on exports from China and other countries. Industry data showed that Chinese airlines are gaining market share on international routes as foreign rivals are deterred by weak China travel demand, rising cost and extended flight times because of the need to avoid Russian airspace. Chinese airlines are gaining market share on international flights, according to industry data. That's as foreign rivals give up on serving the country, deterred by weak demand and rising costs, as well as extended flight times due to the need to avoid Russian airspace. Western carriers like British Airways and Qantas are pulling services from China or opting not to restart flights. British Airways said Thursday it would halt flights from London to Beijing for a year, citing commercial reasons. Last month, it suspended one of its twice-daily London to Hong Kong flights for the same period. And Qantas cited half-empty planes and low demand for China travel when it suspended Sydney to Shanghai flights in July. Since the outbreak of war in Ukraine in 2022, Chinese carriers have continued to take shorter northern routes to Europe and North America, over Russia's vast airspace. In contrast, airlines in Europe, the US and other countries have avoided flying over the country. That's either because they've been banned from the area by Moscow or their own governments, or have chosen not to overfly out of safety concerns. That's expanded the cost advantage held by Chinese airlines and allowed them to take a larger share in the international market. One analyst told the country's carriers enjoy cost savings of 30% compared with Western rivals. All that left China with nearly a quarter less flights abroad in July compared with the same month before the pandemic. But local carriers like China Eastern are operating 90% of their international flights, indicating it's overseas airlines that have retreated. And with that, we mark the end of the first bulletin of the Nightly Business Report for this week. We will see you again tomorrow with the latest happenings around the business globe. Until then, I am Vinod Surya. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.